Namaste. And welcome to the next episode of Yoga Vasishta. Rama here is talking about the vicissitudes of time. So far he has uh, exposed the deficiencies of so many material things. Things that most people think are wonderful and valuable and important. And he has systematically presented their disadvantages and their failings and their problems. Huh? Everything from birth, youth, wealth, power, fame, old age, huh? even uh, sexual relations, there's so many things that people think are really wonderful. Rama has pointed out that these are all going to disappoint us. And so actually he's, he's been leading us along toward a certain point. And what is that point? That all these things that we consider important, valuable, pleasurable, enjoyable, and so on, are temporary. They're unreliable. And we have seen in our own experience that when these temporary things change, they can ruin somebody's life. My great uncle, Uncle Reg, <laughs> he was a tough old bird. His whole life from age 16, he was a milkman for Bordens. And he started with a team of four horses and a wagon, delivering these heavy metal cans of milk. Have you ever tried to lift one of those when it's full? It's like close to 100 pounds. So from a very young age, he was involved in hard physical labor. And of course, later on, he came to drive trucks. And by the time he retired at age 65, he was driving a 60-foot semi-trailer through the narrow streets of New York and delivering milk to hospitals and things like that. Not only driving, but also loading and unloading. So this guy was built, you know, he was strong. He was a resilient, tough guy. Well, when he retired in 19, uh, when was it, 68, at the age of 65, within two years he was dead. Why? He had lost the center of his life. His job was his life. He was his job. He was the milkman. Uh, the driver. He was the dude. He was the man. And when he lost that, he didn't know what to do with himself. He'd sit around all day smoking, drinking, watching TV. And within two years, he had been hale and hearty. Oh yeah, he had a little emphysema. But suddenly it got a lot worse <laughs> when he stopped his work. And then suddenly he died. I've seen similar things happen to many people. And there have been movies and plays and novels written about this. Huh? Someone will be married happily for many, many years. And then the wife or husband dies. And the person is just at sea. They don't know what to do with themselves. They don't know who they are anymore. And so they deteriorate very quickly and die. This is the ruin of anyone who depends on something which is fundamentally undependable, fundamentally transient and broken. Why? Because it's material. Because it has material beingness which is subject to time. 
So slowly, slowly, Ram has been going through all of these things that we normally base our lives on, our position, our wealth, our family, our bodies, our relationships, and so on. And now finally, in the last few chapters of book one, he's beginning to zero in on the real cause, time. So in this chapter, what is it? Chapter 23. He begins a series of chapters about time itself and how time is really the cause of all our suffering in material life. Let's look into it. Time is a rat that gnaws off all threads of thoughts that men may entertain about the contemptible pleasures of this world. There is nothing in this world which all devouring time will spare. He devours all things like an undersea fire consumes the overflowing sea. Time is the sovereign Lord of all and equally terrible to all things. He is ever ready to devour all visible beings. Time, as master of all, spares not even the greatest of us for a moment. He swallows the universe within himself, whence he is known as the universal soul. Time pervades all things, but has no perceptible feature of his own except that he is imperfectly known by the names of years, ages, and millennia. So here's where Ram's speech begins to expose the real subject of Yoga Vasishta. Huh? Although he is speaking as an inquirer, Yet he is revealing some very deep insights of his own into what is really going on in the world and in life. Ultimately, of course, time is the universal soul. Time is God. Time is that thing which cannot be overcome by anyone. Even the whole universe has to disappear at the end of time. So who can resist the force of time? Nobody. So Rama is saying we have no choice but to surrender to this force of time. Time is the controller, the Ishwara. Time is God. And so ultimately, even though he has no perceptible feature, even though time has no form, no shape, no color, huh? still he controls and is the limit of everything. Time, accompanied by action as his mate, entertains himself in the garden of the world blossoming with the moonbeams of the divine spirit. As the high and huge rock supports its body upon the earth, so does time rest itself in endless and interminable eternity. Time assumes to himself the various colors of black, white, and red, which serve for his vestures. As the earth supports the great hills that are fixed upon it, so time supports all the innumerable ponderous worlds that constitute the universe. Hundreds of great kalpa ages may pass away, yet there is nothing that can move eternity to pity or concern, or stop or expedite his course. It neither sets nor rises. Time is never proud to think that it is he who, without the least sense of pain or labor, brings this world into play and makes it exist. So this is time. Time is the cause of everything. Sarva karana karanam, the cause of all causes. 
So time is the supreme. Time is absolute. It neither rises nor sets. And just like a boulder is supported by the ground, time is supported by eternity. Eternity is another dimension. Eternity is a different world. This world is the world of time. So everything is temporary. But that world of eternity, everything is permanent. There is no beginning, no end, uh, no change, no action, no movement, no location in eternity. All is one. This is Brahman. This is the God. This is the infinite power that brings everything into existence and then destroys it at the end. Time destroys youth as the moon shuts the petals of the lotus. It destroys life like a lion kills the elephant. There is nothing so insignificant that time does not steal. After sporting for a kalpa period in the act of killing and crushing all living beings, time comes to lose its own existence and becomes extinct in the eternity of the spirit of spirits. After a short rest and respite, time reappears as the creator, preserver, and destroyer of all who remembers all. He shows the shapes of all things, whether good or bad, keeping his own nature beyond the knowledge of all. Thus does time expand and preserve, and finally dissolve all things by way of sport. So time is not concerned. Time does not value these creations of the universe. He, he simply plays with them huh? like a juggler. The, the, the worlds and galaxies, planets and suns are just like balls in the hand of a juggler. And when he's done with his act, he simply throws them away and lets them fall. So time is supremely unconcerned with material values. From the viewpoint of time, None of this material world or creation has any value at all. Otherwise, how could he so casually create, maintain, and destroy it? Huh? In the previous reading, the colors white, black, and red were used. And these are also the colors of the gunas. White is sattva guna. Red is raja guna and black is tamoguna. So these are the modes of time, creation, sustenance, and annihilation at last. Red, white, and black. And they are also the colors of the avatars who sustain this creation and annihilate it in the end. So we should understand that this material creation and everything in it is simply temporary and even time itself merges into eternity at the end. And then again it comes out. <laughs> but in between there is a moment of timelessness and we can experience this timelessness through meditation. And that's what Vasishta is going to teach Rama as soon as he gets done <laughs> telling us about all the problems of life, uh, then in book two, which is coming up in like 10 chapters, Vasishta is going to give the process of yoga by which one is able to leave time and reach eternity. Om Tat Sat. Aum Harihi Aum Karunar Navamai Karudakadinal Gum
ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವಂ ಗೀದ